My latest endeavor has been making a camera tracker add-on for Blender. <laughs> That's not the purpose of this tutorial. The point is, when I use this camera tracker for various scenes, it generates a point cloud along with how the camera was moving. And while this point cloud does describe the scene, there's always going to be some floaters or some points that are far off in the distance and I don't care about them. And figuring out how to clean up a point cloud isn't necessarily obvious how to do. Specifically, the problem is kind of finding these clusters and then deleting leading them. There's going to be a fast, very fast way to do this, and then there's going to be an exact solution. You're going to learn both. Let's get it. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we're going to talk about that later. Here I have a clip of me rotating around a tree like a psycho. Maybe they think I'm trying to get maple syrup or something. I converted this into an image sequence, and I need this as a point cloud. Camera tracker, bring in an image sequence. You can do this with any program that does this. Meshroom is a free one. Settings, fine, CUDA, click. While this goes, I've been watching Mr. Robot recently, and I don't know if it's known for its good or real or fake hacking sequences, but when I see like text going down command prompt, I feel like I'm Mr. Robot, no spoilers. I mean, look at that. Camera tracker is so fast, so fast. Okay, friends, now that we have our camera track, sorry for the sunglasses. Now that we have our track, you can see it is tracking, it's good, but we get so many points that I would say are floaters. So you can totally tell that this is the tree, no problem. And you can even tell that there's certain structure in the distance. What I'm concerned about is kind of like this point right here, or this point right here, or even little clusters. So here's a cluster, another cluster, another cluster. And we need a intelligent way to detect these. Let's start with like the obvious solutions and show why they don't work. So geonodes add a merge by distance node, which makes sense because it's going to take things that are nearby and connect them. So as I increase this, it's cleaning it up, kind of. These outliers, nothing really happens to them, even if we go to extreme values. What if instead we take an outlier like this one and we find its nearest neighbor? In other words, what is the distance to the nearest point? This is kind of a good idea because as these become more outliers, these are far more spread out than this, which is very dense. I made a node group exactly for this. It finds the nearest neighbor and more importantly, the distance. We are going to delete geometry based on where the distance to the nearest neighbor is really big. So find the distance where it is greater than. As I increase this, it does a pretty good job actually, but it still has for every outlier that exists, they come in pairs or maybe in little clusters. And maybe at this point, you know, you do again a merge by distance by like a big number and it still doesn't work. So what is the solution for this? The solution is we need to identify clusters. Let's say we have a cluster right here of three vertices, right? It's separate from everything else. How do I know it's a cluster visually? If I like look at a point right here, I can say it has two neighbors that are close by and nothing else. That is also the case for this one. It has two neighbors and then outside of this like neighborhood, I'll call it nothing else. This one has multiple neighbors within a small neighborhood. And then the very important thing is if we look at like the dense part, any point I look at, even in a small neighborhood, is going to have dozens or hundreds of points. So it's almost like we can find the density of this point cloud via finding clusters. So how do we find how many k neighbors a point has? First of all, here's kind of the fast way. I'm going to merge by distance. That thing we said doesn't work, but I'm just going to merge like this until we get far fewer points. I'm then going to take our points and ask which merge by distance point is it closest to. I'm going to sample the nearest merge by distance. So this index now tells me which cluster it belongs to, right? So if I look at this merge by distance point and I look at the original, we know that these two points belong to this cluster and will therefore have the same index. I can now accumulate field, which will let me sum up how many things there are. Specifically, I want to sum up the integer one for the group ID of this index. So if there's four points in a cluster, it will be one plus one plus one plus one. Two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. And it will calculate this nice total over here. I'll call this density. And then we look at our spreadsheet. You can see the density values are different depending on different areas. Some of them have a density of one, which will be an outlier. It doesn't have any neighbors in a sense, whereas some of them have 160, which probably means it is in this dense cloud. Well, we are going to delete geometry based on where this density is very low. We can actually get rid of this named attribute and just use this directly. Where is the total less than a certain number? Connect that to the delete geometry. At first, everything remains. And then as I increase this, you're going to see it not only deletes points, but it does it in kind of like this clustered way. So even like this one over here survived quite a long time because it has quite a few neighbors. But then as I increase this, we fully cleaned up the point cloud while preserving the detailed areas. We can also talk about the 
neighborhood size. So as I play with this, we have smaller and smaller neighborhoods we're looking at. So this merge distance over here represents the radius or the size of the neighborhood we're looking at. And then this like deletion threshold is saying within that cluster or neighborhood, what qualifies as a deletion? Let's take this over here and turn it into a node group. Specifically, I want to keep the distance and I want to keep this like threshold. This can represent our fast method, which doesn't tell us exactly how many neighbors there are. It's just going to be a pretty good estimate. And now let's talk about how to do it exactly. This tutorial is sponsored by Squarespace, which is the service I use to make a website www.cgmatter.com. Their features allow me to host that part of the business, monthly subscriptions with Blender files and nodes and all this. First of all, I run the membership platform with Squarespace's payment system, which makes it effortless. It's all integrated. Second of all, I have a bunch of assets, specifically images and blend files that I do in each post. That is possible to store with Squarespace's asset browser. And if you want to rapidly design and fill content for your website, there is AI integration baked right in there. Head over to Squarespace, make yourself a website, and when you are ready to launch that, use this link down below in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. In the exact case, I'm going to look at a point, and within a certain neighborhood, I'm just going to count how many the distance between them is within that kind of threshold over here. And I guess more accurately, this neighborhood is centered around this point, because we're going to do it for each one, for each element of our geometry. Specifically, I want to look at every single point. I want to count its nearest neighbors. For that, I need to know the position of every single point. So if I put a field over here and connect it, you can see it turns into a constant value. For every point, we get to know the index of that point and its exact position. And I want to evaluate the distance to other points. I can take the position field and I'm going to calculate the distance to the position of the specific point we're dealing with right now. And I want to check if this is less than if the distance is within the neighborhood of a certain number. We'll call it one. Accumulate field, just like we've been doing before. We can use this directly in the accumulate field node because this less than is just going to be zero or one. It will tell us the total, how many ones satisfy that condition. Now, I can't use this total directly. And why is that? Because we're not evaluating on our original geometry. This is for each element. It's going one by one. I need to look at the point cloud except for the current point. I want to separate by index the original geometry. Let's disconnect this by where the index is not equal to this value. So this is going to give us our point cloud except for the one. And by the way, the way I made this node group over here, which is at cgmatter.com, all these custom node groups, is I separate geometry for our points. And I want to see the selection where the index is not equal to our specific number. So index not equal to the for each one and then separate. It is on this geometry that I want to evaluate this accumulate field. Sample the index of index zero or one or two. I just need to know this value in general, that value being the total. And then this value, which again represents the number of neighbors within a certain neighborhood. I want to take my per each point store named attribute, this exact value over here, and I'm going to call that neighbors. And then finally, this is what gets outputted. And I did flip this equal should be not equal. And then we can see we have this, you know, neighbors list, which will tell us exactly how many neighbors there are, again, within a certain threshold. So we expect as this number is lower, the neighbors should also be lower. So if I set this to zero, we have no neighbors. This makes sense because if I look at a individual point at a small neighborhood, it's going to have no neighbors. And then as it gets bigger, it's going to have more until it has more and more and more, etc. If I delete my geometry based on this neighbors value, where is our attribute neighbors less than a certain value? So let's say less than, I don't know, four. It does the same thing, but now the neighbor values are exact. So here I cleaned it up so that we have an exact node group and a fast node group. And if we look at the exact values, you can see the neighbor values over here. Whereas if I do the fast approach, the numbers are going to be different, but you can tell their magnitude is roughly the same. So for example, if I have 16, 4, and 134, it's medium, small, and large. If I do the fast approach, yeah, the numbers are different. But again, we have medium, small, and large. So it effectively finds like the density up to a multiple. You can see this one takes 11 milliseconds for 15,000 points, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that much. Whereas the exact for the same 15,000 takes a third of a second. But once you're at a million points, this can take like minutes. And now as the final result, because I guess I didn't show it, here is the vastly cleaned up version of our point cloud. Whereas before you can see we have all of these floaters, clusters that have a low density. Again, I got this point cloud or really this track where you can see the cameras orbiting around it using my new camera tracker add on. I wanted to give something of value, not just talk about it. Check it out if you are interested and thank you. Let's do our outro here. Thank you for watching.